everyone this is ashish welcome to the channel in today's video i am going to talk about uh, iron fly and its uh, adjustments okay so i'm going to start sharing my screen okay all right so what is an iron fly uh, in first place so in iron fly what you do is you sell at the money call and put options and you buy wings Okay, so let's say uh, currently, so expiry is tomorrow. So we are not going to look at uh, tomorrow's expiry. Let's look at 13th October. So mm -hmm. if we have to sell an iron fly, what we are going to do is Nifty uh, closing it, uh, closing it is at uh, 17,300. So that becomes our uh, near to 17,300. So that is our near ADM strike. So we are going to sell call and put at 17,300 and we are going to buy wings. How far out uh, wings uh, we should buy that I'm going to discuss. Uh, uh, let's assume that uh, whatever it has suggested, we go ahead with that and we create an iron fly. So this is the payoff curve of uh, iron fly. If market stays range bound, which is, which, which is known to be uh, uh, kind of a fact that market stays range bound uh, for the most of the time, but that is not uh, true in fact. Uh, in fact, we are seeing uh, 500, 600 points uh, move in Nifty in, within the matter of two, three days. But uh, if the market stays range bound, we are going to make money in this trade. So we have profit potential from 17,000 uh, to 17,550. But if market doesn't stay range bound, it goes out of this range, uh, then we are going to have some loss. To some extent, the losses can be managed, which I'm going to discuss in this video, uh, that let's say even if market, our current break even is 17,500, even if market goes to 17,500, 17,600, maybe 17,650 or so, 17,700 maybe, we can manage that. But if it continues to go in one direction or if it is doing a lot of uh, zigzag very fast, uh, then we are going to incur the loss in uh, this strategy. It is neutral strategy. It is going to make money if market stays range bound. If it, if it is a trending market, uh, you cannot uh, make money. I mean, uh, at some point you will have to decide and close your... Uh, strategy and book loss. So I'm going to discuss uh, all of that. Uh, this we can do in weekly, uh, which we have done here. We can also do it in monthly. So let's say I'm going to reset this and sell, sell a fly in monthly. So obviously wings will be a little, little more uh, far out uh, because of the deltas uh, that will be there. So this is your monthly structure. Now the problem is if you do it in uh, weekly, then you are prone to uh, gamma risk, right? Uh, because there is very less time to expiry, just four days to expiry when you initiate it on uh, Friday. So your strategy is more uh, risk or more prone to uh, gamma risk, right? Uh, still people do it in weeklies only and uh, I'm going to discuss that only. So let's uh, reset it again and let's uh, sell a fly at Okay, so we have added a fly. So what I usually uh, would suggest that the premium that you are receiving, right, on the short straddle, so which in this case is 17,300. So we are collecting about 380. Uh, so the straddle is trading about 380 rupees, right? So our short strike is giving us a cushion of uh, uh, 380 points on the either side. So what we can do is we can select wings, which are 380 points wide, right? So that is how you can choose your wings. Uh, now 380 points is not available, obviously. So either we go with 350 or we go with 400. So in this case, the uh, system has gone with 350, which is fine. Uh, we can look at uh, the max profit and the max loss. Max profit is 1,400. Max loss is 5,000 on uh, one lot and break evens are 17,051 uh, to 17,549. Now let's, let's fix an account size, uh, you know, uh, so that we can uh, define how many lots we have, we are going to trade. So if we fix that account size to, let's say 10 lakhs, 
right? So if we have an account size of 10 lakhs, how many lots should we start with? Okay. So at any given point in time, your strategy should not be in a loss of, uh, say more than two, two and a half percent, right? Uh, every week. So we should not be risking more than two, two and a half percent every week on uh, this particular strategy. So that makes us, makes it 20,000, 20, 25,000. And when we start an uh, iron fly, we should not start with full position size. Uh, because if market moves, you have to adjust your position, which will, uh, you know, require you to take additional risk. Margin is not a problem here because uh, with flies, uh, it's very uh, little margin that is required, right? On one lot, it is only required uh, 60,000. So with 60,000, you can take a risk, which is 5,000, right? So that is almost 8, 9%. So we are not going to look at it from the margin perspective, but we are going to look at it uh, that if a one side move happens, then we have to uh, add more position to it, which will add more risk. So keeping that in mind, we are not going to start our fly with full position size. We are going to start only with, let's say, two or three lots here, which is one somewhere be between one, one, two, uh, one, one and a half percent, right? So uh, let's say we started at uh, started with three lots. So and fly number of lots we change it to three. Okay, so the payoff obviously remains the same. We have just increased uh, the lot size. So the loss is fifteen thousand, which is one and a half percent of our capital. Again, we are going to add more uh, to it in case there is one directional move. Right, so which will add uh, to our risk, which will make it uh, probably two and a half, three percent kind of a risk, which obviously uh, would happen at expiry. We can come out uh, before expiry at probably two percent, one and a half, two percent uh, kind of a risk. Uh, now, what are the adjustment methods? Okay, so uh, let's say uh, market moves one direction. Okay, but it is still within our breaking. Okay, so let's say it moves to seventeen thousand four hundred. At what point, at which point, what we can do is these wings, uh, this wing, which is there, right? Uh, we can move the wing closer. Okay. So let's take an example, actually. So we're going to option simulator. I'm looking at Nifty's chart here. Okay. So previous expiry was 29th of September, which is somewhere here. And 23rd was Friday. Yeah, Friday. 23rd was Friday, 29th expiry. Nifty has moved about 7,300 to uh, not much. It should be easily uh, manageable. So let's take uh, an example of that only. Okay, so we are going to expiry 29th September and we are going to start on 23rd. Okay. And we will, uh, it's it's best to initiate this trade uh, during second half. Uh, I mean, you can initiate it in the first half, uh, first thing also, but uh, that will give you some profit if uh, market uh, stays range bound. But if there is a big move on the Friday uh, itself, then you're going to adjust your fly very soon, which is not a, a great thing to do, right? A great position to be in. So let's... So let's say on uh, 23rd of September, we initiate this at around three o'clock, so which is three or five. So market is trading at 17,327. So first you, what you need to do is you need to find your uh, nearest uh, ATM strike. So which could be 17,300 or which could be 17,350. In this case, I think it is uh, there's not much uh, premium in the implied future and it is probably 17.325 only, right? Because your call is trading at uh, 197, put is trading at uh, 170. So call minus put gives us 27, add it to this uh, 17.300 strike, which will give us 17.327. So implied future is trading at 17.327. So we can add uh, maybe 17.300 put. Okay. Let's say we had three lots of 17,300 put and add 17,350 calls. 
so it becomes kind of uh, condor but since we uh, if we were doing multiple lots we could have possibly done uh, uh, 17300 17350 both half uh, half quantity each but since we are doing only three lots so let's say we uh, instead of going right on 17300 on 17350 and taking that additional directional risk we are uh, doing it at uh, 17300, 17350, which gives us about 17340 rupees. So we can choose our wings to be 300 uh, points wide, right? So our put can be 16, no, sorry, 17,000. Going to buy this, and our pawn can be 17,650. Then buy this, right? So this has given us an a structure which is uh, a pair of diagram which is close to what you would uh, see in iron fly instead of just this flat line here, which is because of uh, the fifty point uh, distance between uh, call it call and put at the of the sold uh, strikes. Okay, so uh, let's see what happens uh, uh, next day. We go. Okay, so now you can see that market has moved significantly lower, which is uh, now it is trading at uh, 17,015, which is uh, below our break even. So even if, even if, uh, so if it happens early in the expiry, right? So your wings will still be pricey. If it happens very early in the expiry, uh, like in this case, it has happened on Monday itself, the wings will still be pricey, but we can still look at uh, uh, the wings, uh, the call side wings, which is one second, you know, when it is near to break even. So let's say uh, this is trading at 17,160, our break even is 17,091, which is near to break even. So let's look at uh, uh, option chain again. Uh, the wing that we already had is 17,650, which is trading for 19.7 rupees. If we bring our uh, wing 100 point closer, right, at 17,550, then it is happening on, uh, with a debit of rupees 10 only, which is a good uh, uh, adjustment to do. Because what happens is in case market reverses from here, right, then you will still be in profit. The current profit is 2,200. So if market reverses from here uh, sharply, and if you have brought your uh, long wing closer, then it will uh, still be a profitable situation, right? So we are going to close this in 19.7 at this point in time and going to add 17,550 calls, right? three lots. Okay, so we have paid some debit and you see that upside risk is literally uh, vanished, right? We don't have any upside risk. So if market reverses from here, it is a favorable situation to us and there's no upside risk. So that is how uh, you can reduce the risk on one side. Now imagine if this thing happens again and market moves uh, back to this point you know, closer towards uh, our upper break even. What we can do is we can br uh, bring the put side wing also closer. So that way uh, your fly will become profitable no matter where, where the market moves. So these are good adjustments to make, uh, which you can do in uh, very, and, and pay a very little uh, price for that. Okay, but that doesn't happen. Uh, market uh, probably continues to go down. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about, uh, so this is, uh, this is uh, done in order to uh, protect profit, right? Uh, you're bringing your, of your wings closure uh, towards the, uh, closer to the uh, sold strike is done in order to pro uh, protect your profit. It could be either on the put side, it could be either on the call side, or it could be on the both sides also. Let's say for two days market doesn't move anywhere, right? It stays right there. What we can do in uh, that case is uh, bring both sides uh, close. So that will give us, uh, uh, you know, that will protect uh, profits for us. Now, in this case, when market moves in one direction, right? In this case, it goes to 17,150, which is close to our uh, 
break even uh, generally a good uh, way to look at it is that unless the break even breaches we are not going to make any changes right so we will we will wait for the break even to breach so this is in this case uh, 17100 is our break even currently it is trading at 17,091, which is barely, uh, you know, the break even is breached. So maybe we can still wait. Again, I don't think it has breached. No, probably it has breached significantly. Oh no, 17,015 is there. So which is probably monthly feature. In this case, it is monthly only. Yeah, so that is now 100 points. So it has breached by uh, almost 80, 85 points, which is half a percent of the uh, underlying. So now is the good time to make an adjustment, right? So since we had not deployed our entire capital or uh, not deployed uh, the capital based on the risk that we are going to take uh, on this position, what we can do is we can add a new fly here. Right. So either, so one way of looking at it is we are adding new fly here. So which is, uh, we are going to sell 17,000. Uh, probably, okay, let's keep it three lots only. Okay. And we are going to buy wings. Now 17,000, we have sold it for almost 300 rupees, uh, 290 something. So either we can buy 250 point wings, right? So put side, since put side is getting tested, there is no denying that we are going to buy a uh, put side wing also. So we are going to buy 16, uh, 750 wings, three lots, right? Now call side is where you can make a decision because we already removed uh, upside risk uh, by bringing the uh, being closer to the uh, sold strike in our previous uh, fly, we can be a little liberal about uh, what we want to do on the call side. But I don't advise that we can still go ahead and buy 17,250 call, call options. Okay, so this, this is the structure that we get. Our break even uh, gets down to 16,900. So we have extended the break even by almost 200 points. Earlier break even uh, was 17,100. Now break even is 16,900. So this is one such adjustment which you can do. Uh, our upper break even is 17,481 already. So instead of buying this uh, 17,250 call, we could have probably looked at buying 17,400 call on also. So uh, let's try that. Okay, let's delete this one. Now upper break even is 17,400 almost. And let's say we buy that only. So we buy 17,400. So this becomes a broken fly. Right? So this become a broken uh, fly wherein your upside risk is uh, has become slightly higher because the wing that we have chosen on the call side has moved a distance uh, than what we have on the put side. But uh, on the put side, which is the one getting tested, we are uh, uh, we are going to make uh, less loss if it continues to go down. Okay, so this is also one way of uh, uh, looking at it, and you can uh, probably. Thing to do this but this you should do only when uh, you know there is one adjustment that has moved your uh, fly in your favor uh, on the uh, non-tested side which in this case is call side okay uh, now what happens if it continues to go down from here right so right now we have a we are sitting uh, at a loss of 2500 looking at a break even of 16900 so what we can do is if it continues to go down and max loss right now is 28,000, which is uh, close to 3%, which will happen on the upside, by the way. Uh, so which which will take some time, right, uh, to for market to reverse again. On the downside, it is still at 2% uh, of the capital. Now, 
Uh, yeah. So this this one next ad adjustment which I'm going to talk about it is something that I've talked in my previous videos also, which is adding fly on uh, one side only, either the pull put side or the call side, the one which is getting tested. So in this case, it is put side. So I'm not sure if Nifty moved to sixteen eight hundred or something. Let's look at that. No, I don't think it. So the low is of 16.940. Oh, yes. Here we have 16.820, right? So which is happening on 28th of September. So let's go to 28th of September. We go one day ahead. We are sitting in the middle, sitting at some profit. One day ahead. Okay. So I'm looking to get to a point where Nifty was trading around 16,820 and uh, uh, the system, you know, would have, it, it would have breached the break even and, okay, probably it was at open only. Sixteen eight sixty one. okay, let's change it to... 15 minutes or yeah so 28 september 9 15 or towards close yeah towards close or right at open so let's go towards close or or let it be let's uh, be at open so 9 20 five minutes so nifty future is currently trading at 861 867 and which is barely uh breached the break even so that just okay let's talk about the adjustment i can uh probably run some simulations uh, uh taking some suggestions from you guys in the next video uh, but for this one, I'll uh, quickly cover the adjustments uh, that I wanted to talk about. So if if your break even further uh, breaches, like in this case, it has barely uh, breached, but assume it has uh, breached in, and it has uh, gone to 16,800 or 16,780 or something. Then what we can do is we can add a put butterfly on it. We are not going to do anything with the calls. We are going to add only a put butterfly. So the put that you have to buy has to be an in the money put. So if Nifty has breezed here, so if let's say it was trading at 17,800 or something, then what we can do is, sorry, 16,800, what we can do is we are going to buy 16,900 put. Okay. So we are going to buy that. Okay. I think we have to buy six lots because uh, now we are in a, can't do that. Six. six lots and then we are going to sell double the quantity uh, of an OTM put. Now uh, which strike to choose that you can see is that you should be paying some debit okay, uh, for that uh, ratio. Either you can do a ratio but I don't advise ratio because it exposes you to unlimited risk. So uh, you do it uh, as a butterfly. So 16,900 is trading at 121. So if we do 16,800, we get a credit because 74 times 2 is 148. And uh, we have bought for uh, 121. So that gives us a credit. 57 also is barely any debit. So we can choose 16,700. So we have bought 16,900. We are going to sell 16,700, double the quantity. And then we are going to buy 16,500, six lots. So we are, we are adding a butterfly here. There's something messed up. Yeah. 16,700, we are going to sell 12 lots. Okay. And now let's look at the payoff. So you see, uh, because of the debit that we are paying, Right. If this is stays in this range, range, then we are going to make some minor loss, which is like two thousand. Uh, sorry, eleven thousand at the expiry, and tomorrow, which is like two thousand. But if it moves further down, 
say 16600 then we are going to be uh, safe till 16600 so our break evens uh, become 16600 to 17314 but in this range we are going to make some loss so if you want to reduce this uh, loss that you are making here what we can do is instead of choosing this butterfly we can probably look at selling 16750 okay and then buy 16600 puts okay so the loss which was there earlier as 11000 here in this small range now it has gone down to only uh, 5 6000 right but our break even would is not extend, extended as much. It is only 16,700 now. Okay. So that is another adjustment that you can keep in your mind that if uh, even after adding one more uh, fly to your uh, existing fly, if the uh, market moves, continues to move in second direction, uh, you can add up, put uh, continues to move in the same direction, you can add up a uh, butterfly on that side, which strikes to choose uh, that you can uh, take uh, based on what you see on the payoff. So if you want your range to be extended uh, much further, then you will have to pay some debit. Obviously, if the market rever recovers or reverses from there, uh, you might not make a uh, lot of money, right? So that is another adjustment. Now, there are certain things uh, which a lot of people do, which I don't, uh, you know, recommend. Or, or I don't suggest that uh, if you are new to uh, trading options, you should be doing that. Like one such thing is that if the market moves in downside, you keep selling additional calls, right? Uh, you just sell naked calls. If the market moves upside, you keep selling additional puts. And that's how you increase your break even. You ex close out uh, the existing loss making side and uh, reverse your position and sell puts or sell calls. What happens is that when it works, it works fine. You know, you make a lot of money. You can come out of a move which is say 600 700 points in nifty and you can come out in very less loss or probably make some money also but when it doesn't work it hurts you really uh, bad so i can see there was one expiry so i will probably talk about that how long it is speed you want to make it okay i don't know let's continue uh which expiry was that? Yeah, I think this one. First September or something. Yeah. So first September expiry. So let's say market was trading on 25th of August, which was probably a Friday. Yeah, 26th of August. So 26th of August, uh, which was a Friday, market was closing at around 17,500. You initiated a fly. Market gaps down, it opens at 17,200 uh, and then so settles uh, somewhere close to 17,380. But by the time you would have initiated another fly, right? So you would have initiated two flies on uh, by the time uh, Monday closes. By the uh, time market closes on Monday, you would have initiated two flies, one at uh, 17,550 uh, and one probably at 17,200, 17,250 kind of levels. Your upper break even is still good enough. But what happens is next day market opens cap up and continues to go up. Okay. It uh, goes up to 17,700. So I'm sure the break even uh, would have challenged. Now imagine when market moves down, you sell calls here, right? You sell naked calls, probably 17,500, 600, collecting pennies. Uh, which would be trading at 10 rupees, 12 rupees. So you are collecting 10 rupees, 10 rupees on selling calls. Market completely reverses, goes up. And now again, you are selling puts, right? So again, you are selling 17, 300, 400 kind of strikes to defend your uh, upside break even. You are selling puts. Market again goes down within the same expiry. It again moves back to 17,500. So imagine what would have, ha would have happened to your additional sold calls, additional sold ports in case of uh, market uh, direction reversing. So this is something I uh, always uh, strongly advise that selling naked option on the other side, e even when I'm doing 
stock option, I don't usually sell extra options, right? So if, let's say if I have a position in Vedant, Vedanta moves down 10%. I, I will try to manage the position by keeping the risk still down, right? I will, I will look to shift the entire straddle. I will look, look to shift down the calls. I will look to uh, probably add a put butterfly in case uh, Vedanta is moving down. But it is not recommended that you add more gamma risk by selling more number of calls to defend because you are not uh, really collecting a lot of money, right? You're not really collecting a lot of premiums. You're, uh, but what you're adding is, uh, is your gamma risk on the uh, other side. So if the reversal happens, it is going to hurt a uh, real bad. So this is one adjustment, uh, which you should not be doing. Okay. Uh, what else? Uh, uh, yeah, I, think that that is about it. I can take a few expiries based on uh, uh, the suggestion that I get in uh, comment section of this video as to uh, which expiry should I be simulating and how uh, can be managed. But uh, uh, please understand one thing. No system can generate money always in uh, every kind of a scenario. So even if you are doing uh, iron fly, which is a neutral strategy, if the market trends continuously in one direction, you are going to lose money, accept it. And uh, it's better to cut off uh, losses, uh, have a have a limit on the losses that you are going to take on uh, one particular expiry and cut it out if it is uh, not working in your favor. Uh, we have seen that uh, people can manage uh, 600, 700, 800, 1000 points uh, move uh, and, uh, you know, they come out of uh, minimal loss. But uh, please understand that the risk taken is uh, also of the higher uh, order, right? And if if it doesn't work, if market reverses, it, it moves in a zigzag pattern, then in those cases, in those weeks, it, it would have been very ugly, which obviously you will not see on Twitter, right? You will only see uh, when it works, works out uh, beautifully. Uh, okay, I'm just thinking if there's any other... Uh, uh, adjustment which you can make. I don't think uh, adding calendars is another way. Uh, adding naked uh, buys is another way, but uh, I don't think uh, uh, those are really good ideas because uh, again, adding calendar, your uh, I mean, you are buying uh, options next weekly, which are uh, priced heavily and uh, uh, current week options are priced uh, lower. I'm I'm not talking about walls here. Walls obviously will be higher in the current week, but uh, the premium uh, in terms of the absolute premiums, because in in a system like Fly, your uh, initial POP is very less. Uh, let's say uh, if we look at uh, it again. Okay, I'm going to go to home. Let's say we had a fly here. So our initial POP is 38%, right? So our initial POP is very less. And if we continue to take debit spreads, uh, like in case of uh, uh, a calendar, which is heavy debit uh, to start with, then our POP is going to go down uh, further. We might be extending like even to certain extent, but our POP goes down. So those are uh, adjustments that I... Uh, I'm not recommending. I'm not sure if others do it or not. This is some something that I don't do personally. Uh, I am flying uh, Nifty. I don't do it at all. Uh, if at all I'm doing indices, it is either for tail risk hedge or for uh, direction, uh, directional trades like in case of put calendars or call calendars uh, or it is purely intraday ball short. Uh, I don't do uh, iron condor or uh, iron flies as such. Okay. All right. I think that's about it. I've spoken quite a bit. Uh, thank you for watching. If you are still watching and uh, please do share it, uh, subscribe to the channel. And uh, if you like the video, do, do share it further. Thank you.